Welcome in. It's another edition of the Doyle and Derek podcast here with the Indie Star. I'm the host of the show, Derek Schultz, and you know by now the award-winning star of the show is Greg Doyle, columnist for the sports section. And, um, you know, this is kind of very rarely... I shouldn't say that, actually, because there is there are times, many times, that life and sports kind of intermix. I know that we try to keep it sports-centric, but, you know, you, you kind of hate looking at it from a sports standpoint here, Greg, but th- with this coronavirus stuff that is just gripping the nation, really gripping the globe, I think the big concern for a lot of people is, hey, what, what is this going to mean for these sporting events now that we've already seen tennis events, soccer events, the Ivy League canceled their basketball tournament? You know, what's going to happen here as we get into what is a very, very busy sports month here in March? The Ivy League canceled? Yeah. Aye. So they're, they're just going to, I think they're just going to pick whoever, was it Yale maybe? I think they're just going to pick whoever, like the old days, they didn't have, they were the last league to have right, a conference right. tournament. For them, it's not that big a deal. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a deal. But yeah, we're clearly heading in the direction where every single day something else is canceled, whether it's, you know, Serie A in Italy or mm-hmm. whatever. I mean, every single day something else is happening and. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know when the when the RFRA, the Religious Freedom Restoration, whatever, when that passed, you know that f- crosses over into sports too because it impacts the world, uh, the sporting world. So you got to talk about it in that sense. People won't hear about the coronavirus in some other way. Go listen somewhere else. But this is a sports story at the moment for mm-hmm. us. And yeah, I'm scared to death. Actually, I'm scared. I don't mean of catching it. I'm scared to death that the regional that well, the term will be game will be fanless, and that might be medialess, medialess too. I'm not sure why I'm. I'm why would they give me access, but you know, not fans? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you because, as of right now, as many of you know, um, I don't have an official capacity, even <laughs> though I still have credentials for things. But you're in locker rooms all the time in the NBA, NHL, all these uh, sports leagues are saying, "Hey, no more, no more locker room access." Now, I, I, as far as I'm, I'm seeing, they're still going to do podium stuff. Is that right? So you'll still have access to coaches and players, just not what you're used to. And I think for somebody like you, Greg, who likes to kind of hit on the personal stories, this is going to hurt you, right? Yeah, well, they're they're keeping us uh, well in those leagues a six foot distance, so you can interview people in group settings, I guess. But oh, okay. You gotta be six feet so away. I they were all gone. So, so that might be a podium. Well, you can't be in the locker room, but the post game they're gonna bring the players out, and you gotta be six feet away. Um, yeah, yeah. For me, I I do like to walk people. I mean, at Purdue they call me Hallway Greg because mm-hmm. I'm always waiting in the hallway to talk to whoever player or coach I want to get with. I'm not gonna ask my question so thirty people can use you know my quotes. Now, they ask their question. I try not to use theirs either, but I want a guy by myself. So, yeah, it's going to hurt me a little bit, I suppose, but um, I'm a trained pro. I could probably get by without it. You're also a pro germaphobe, aren't you? So do you have, like, hand sanitizer and all of that on you right now? You know, it's weird. I don't. You'd think I would. I'm the guy. Do you know how I shop for groceries? No, you've never told me this. Oh, I wear – first of all, they've got those little wipes, right? Yeah, yeah, for the carts. Oh, I wear those wipes out, a, a ton of them. <laughs> And then when they have – like I go to Kroger. I'm a Kroger guy. Mm-hmm. So then Kroger always has their you gotta weekly – got to say Kroger's in Indiana. I hate that. <laughs> I, I, I don't hate that. I don't want to say hate that because someone I care about very much says Kroger's with an S. I don't hate that. Mm-hmm. But I don't understand that. Walmarts in Mississippi, they say Walmarts. It's but, a big – you know, attach an S on everything here in Indiana. I don't know what it is. I don't get that. But uh, but I'm a Kroger guy, singular. And <laughs> I the, the Kroger shopper, I ra- – so I wipe it down with the wipes, and then with the Kroger Shopper, I wrap that around it, too. Like, I'm not t- – not only am I wiping it down, but then I'm not touching it. And and this is how I live all – I mean, I, I lift weights in my apartment gym and uh, when I'm not at the LA Fitness Boxing, but I lift there, and I get a, a, a paper towel in each hand, and that's what I grab the bench press with, and that's what I grab the dumbbell. I'm not touching them. And yet, I eat, A, I eat garbage off the floor. Yeah, I was going to say. Right? Yep. And, and B, I don't, I'm not a hand sanitizer guy, so I – I mean, I might be insane, but anyway. I'll I have the awful habit, you know, I, I smoke cigarettes for 12 years, but um, the, the second worst habit of my life is I bite my nails all the time. Aye. And that's something that you just can't do with, you, you shouldn't do it anyway, but you especially shouldn't do it right now. Oh, right. So I'm trying to be like real cognizant of the fact that, you know, don't don't touch your mouth or anything like that. It's gross, and, I, and my wife hates it, and I just... You know, LeBron James does it. So Bites, he does. Yeah, yeah. Before he shoots free throws. But since we're talking about gross habits, this has got nothing to do with the coronavirus. But uh, uh, can you see on my my beard? Can you see there's white spots below each corner of my mouth? Yeah, that's because I pull my I pluck my beard hairs when I'm writing. If I'm stuck, really, which I apparently get stuck a lot. Yeah, I sit there. Do they I, grow back? 
they do, but I keep okay. pulling them out. Yeah. I pull them out, I, and I realize, <laughs> oh my gosh, I my 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 full beard, whatever yeah. it is, is like I, it, I'm missing patches because I pull them out one at a time, and then I look at it like there it is, and then I don't have to pull it for it's an OCD thing. I don't have to I don't have to pull once I've gotten one out until I'm stuck again, and then I pull until I get it out. So it's like a writer's block aid. Sort of. It's just a. It's a nervous habit of, or, a, un, yeah, I don't know. Just a when I'm stuck and I'm thinking, maybe it's a deep. In, I don't. Cause I don't have. I don't do writer's block. I, I don't even give into. I refuse to even. <laughs> no, I, I don't. But what I do is when I'm debating what you know, hmm. unblocked word I'm going to use next. If I'm not sure where to go next, I I pluck at it until it comes out, and I can tell. Like like, because it doesn't hurt. It kind of feels almost like. A, well, I don't want to go there, but. It, you can tell when something leaves your leaves your face and not in a painful like okay I got it yeah it's just it's a sad story I think we all have stuff like that like nervous ticks or whatever um, I actually had uh, we're we're getting really deep into the personal stuff here I had a, a tongue ring for five years oh I didn't need to know that and uh, and I, I used to not. click it on my teeth uh, and uh, my my ex girlfriend didn't like clicking it on my teeth she didn't like that sound uh, sometimes I'd wake up at night and I'd have a dream that I was trying to eat a tic tac. And it was me trying to chew on the tongue stud. Derek, if you pull was... the if you pull the back of your shirt up and you got a tramp stamp, we're never doing this no, again. No, no, no tattoos. Uh, my dad told me he wouldn't pay my college tuition if I ever came home with a tattoo. So in my true rebel sense, I, I instead had five piercings. Five in college, yeah. I Do I even want to know where some of them were? No, no, nothing, nothing gross. The tongue was the, the that is grossest gross. of the gross. That ones. is right. Yeah. That's just. And then were you one of those guys that because you've got a tongue ring, it doesn't do you any good unless you show it off, so you're wagging your tongue at people? Oh, every picture of me from like oh, yeah, 2001 to 2004 ish is <laughs> ish. Yeah, right around there. I just want to vomit. Uh, let's move right on. You know, I attended Indiana University in those days when I had the tongue stud. Oh, and they must be so proud. Indiana University is trying to fight their way into the NCAA tournament. They play tomorrow. I'm we're, surprised we're taping they only- this banned Bob Knight back right then. I, you should have been right there with them. I'm, I'm just, I can't get over this. We all theory. did horrible stuff when Nobody we Nobody did younger. anything that horrible. We all did horrible stuff. I've done weird stuff my entire life. I've never done anything that awful. Menthol cigarettes and tongue rings. And I've got a tattoo that says hers on my arm, and the her in question has been divorced from oh me. Boy. And she went in there to get a tattoo herself. It was yeah. my Valentine's Day idea. Hey, let's get his and hers tattoos. <laughs> so she goes into her little booth. I go into mine. I come out with hers like I'm supposed to. She comes out with a damn ladybug. Wow, so she she got should have divorced her right there. Jeez, I mean I got screwed. Yeah, I got hers. So I went back, and then a few years later, I'm fighting, and I'm bought, and I'm going to this UFC, this MMA gym where Rich Frank Franklin and a bunch of Dustin Hazlett, a bunch of fighters are fighting, and I'm there, and <laughs> and they've got all their badass tattoos, and and because everybody's in tank tops, so am I, and I got hers, and I'm still mad at you and for she having gets cold feet. I'm still mad at you for having a tongue ring. <laughs> I, I wanted to get Schultz in old English letters across my back tattooed, so thank God I didn't do that because that would be the, the most D-bag thing possible. Uh, Indiana tried to fight its way in the NCAA tournament. They played tomorrow here in Indy against Nebraska, who is just awful. Um, you know, Fred Hoiberg, uh, I'm a big fan of. I know that he's well-liked from his Pacers days. He's a beloved figure in the state of Iowa and and what he did as a player and coach at Iowa State. I, I, think, I think he's going to do a good job with that program, but in the moment, Nebraska stinks. <laughs> They're really, really, really bad. Uh, does Indiana have to win that game at minimum to even be in the conversation for the end? Well, not. The, I mean, they're still in the conversation, but to, to make the NCAA field, do they have to avoid a terrible loss tomorrow? I, th- they better, right? I, I, mm-hmm. I think they ought to be in no matter what. The, the, the field is not done in a vacuum, and and I'm not like the Sesame Street, Street bracketologists who <laughs> know what's going on. I don't know what else is out there. I feel like in, IU has a resume that belongs in there. Having said that, it's going to be close, and it's really going to be close if the last impression they leave on the selection committee is losing to the worst team in the league, you know, in the state of Indiana. That that won't go over well. So it's not like beating Nebraska wins you any points at all, but it avoids you losing points. By, it's a joyless game. It's a joyless game. You're, yeah, you're, you're, it's, it's a lose, lose situation. It doesn't help you. It can only hurt you. And it makes you wonder, and I've got this story up right now, if I can do some shameless plug, but it kind of makes you wonder – um, how is Archie Miller going to behave, you know, during the game? And behave maybe is the wrong word. Act whatever. He's been very erratic since the Penn State game. Since he karate chopped that that uh, clipboard. Yeah. I um, mean, he's almost every game. In fact, he, they played five games since then. He's done something very strange four times. And so, you wonder if uh, 
you know, you kind of saw it with Mike Davis in the later years where, you know, not everybody can handle it. And there's a lot of stuff that you have to handle as Indiana coach that I actually kind of I'm, I'm sympathetic to anybody who takes that job. I know they get paid handsomely, but I think it's a difficult job because I don't think that the expectations line up with reality. Um, but that said, you know, p- part of what's really kind of turned me off here on, on Archie, and, and I know that you like him and, and all of that from a, a personal standpoint is that I I think you have to kind of earn the ability to be that way. Like, if Matt Painter went on a rant about Joe Lenardi, cool. You know, Matt Painter was five seconds away from a Final Four. Matt Painter's won a couple of Big Tens. You know, Matt Painter, at the end of the day, is going to have stuff named after him at Purdue. I'm just grabbing him as an example. I mean, obviously, Coach K, you know, I could grab anybody as an example. You know, Archie Miller really hasn't done anything yet. And, um, you know... some people like it. I, I, I guess it, it depends on which camp you're in, Greg. Some fans like the fiery demeanor and all of that, but sometimes when he's ranting about whatever else and we've got to play better and we've got to put in more effort, I'm thinking to myself, no, man, like you, you got to wear some of this on you. You got to be better. You know, you got to make sure that your team doesn't get into the fetal position late at home against Maryland and Wisconsin. If they win either of those games, we're not even having this conversation. Indiana's easily in the field if they would have held on to a seven point lead with. 55 seconds left against Maryland and not giving up a 14 donut run <laughs> against Wisconsin, a team that they haven't been able to beat for 20 years. No matter who the coach is. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, Wisconsin's beaten Indiana like a drum for the entire 21st century. Yeah, there are p- people that want to say, and I am an Archie guy, I like him, but people that want to say, this is fiery and I like fiery, th- this is not fiery. There's a difference. You know, um, it, and I, in the moment, in real time, maybe because I asked the question, he was actually looking at me when he gave that Sesame Street story spiel. In the moment, in real time, I, I, I'm, ki- I'm giggling and kind of enjoying it. But, of course, at the very – I really didn't realize what it said about Lenardi until the very end. At that point, it's too late. And I, I didn't – I should have disliked that more in real time. I should have written something a little bit different than I did. I should have made it clear you can't do that. Um, my story was kind of neutral about, like, I don't – I'm not really have an opinion about what he did, but here's what I think it means. I should have. You can't do that. You just can't. Yeah. Joe Lenardi's a great guy. You can, maybe he's not a great bracketologist. I have no idea. I I don't think people whose reputations is based on how good are they at projecting the field. I don't think they, you know, because I can hear fans going, yeah, but he's always down. No. People like that are are only down on whoever they're down on because they think they're right. They're not down on. I mean, they're, what they're not going to do is, yeah, I think I use in, but I don't like I use. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say they're out. And then you hurt your credibility for the rest oh, of your it's career. It's ridiculous. But Artie doesn't care about Indiana either way. He doesn't care about any of these teams. He's trying to evaluate them and see if they belong. Yeah. So that and was it, no good. Know, and when coaches insinuate that stuff, it's it's really well. I guess you know Archie pretty much said it blatantly. It's um it's really stupid. I don't blame him for being frustrated. I mean Indiana had absolutely no business losing that game to Wisconsin. None. Yeah. Um and you know when you see Wisconsin. You know, I don't want to get into discussion of where Indiana is, but when you see Wisconsin continue to do this, where you know that team on paper is not very good, they're not, and they're Big Ten champs. And how many times have we seen that over the last twenty years, where Wisconsin squeezes every ounce of what they have every single year from their squad, and Indiana so rarely has done that in the last quarter century. In fact, they've they've underachieved probably three times the amount of times that they've overachieved in the last 25 years. Well, one thing about this specific IU roster they have right now that is, you know, uh, there's a lot of things you can say is the problem. But for me, the biggest problem is that in three years, nobody's gotten any better. Like Trace Jackson Davis is great. Who, however you are as a freshman when you get here, that's kind of what you are. Mm-hmm. Um, Justin Smith is marginally better. I thought, he, you know, the first game of the year, he, he put the ball on the deck, and I thought, okay, he's gotten better. No, it really hadn't. Devontae Green is a function of how many, how many minutes he gets. But is he any better? He might be more prolific because he plays more, but he's not any better. Al Durham, I thought, was looking like he's going to be a lot better. He not. No. You know, guys just don't get any better. You Michigan players, they get better. At least they did in the last coach. We'll see what happens with John Howard. We don't know. It's too soon. Purdue players, although this year harms and Nogel Eastern – yeah, no gel is, is an example of one that hasn't seemed to get a lot better. Has, but so it, many of them have. And Aaron Wheeler either. This yeah. is this year's You're the right. exception at Purdue because usually Purdue has guys that just every year get better, mm. better, better. But this year it's not happening that way. But Wisconsin, you look at that roster on paper, these are all guys that, that couldn't get on the court a year or two ago, and now they're the ones lighting up Indiana. That's what you'd like to see would happen with you know with guys like Deron Davis. Of he's been injured. That's probably not fair, but – but guys like Al Durham and Vontae Green, you'd like them to step up and become all Big Ten players instead of just being the same guy they were as freshmen. 
I've had some IU fans uh, on Twitter, you know, kind of talk about, God, isn't it sad that you have to wait for Indiana to win this game against Nebraska just to get in the field? And, you know, part of me is also like, look, if they make the NCAA tournament, that's a huge positive. Like, we can sit here and talk about Indiana's bar of expectation should be higher than just getting in the NCAA tournament. I don't disagree with that. But I don't understand – and do you get this at all, Greg, from your columns? I don't understand the fan – like, somebody who identifies as an IU fan or a Purdue fan – that is like, well, I don't even want them to make the NCAA tournament. I'm thinking to myself, what do you mean? Oh, I've, I've, how, how could you not want them to make it? No, I've, I've seen that for years back when I was at CBS and before that Charlotte Observer, Charlotte Observer with NC State specifically. I've seen it for years. Fan bases that get so frustrated that they want the coach gone, want their team to lose so their coach is gone. So they can get be- – they look at it not as you know being a bad fan. They look at it as like you, know, you slash and burn. It's, mm-hmm. it's crops. Sometimes you just have to burn a, cro- a field down and let the oxygen take have six months of nothing, and then it'll grow fertile stuff in a year. That's what I see happening. All NC State, Herb Sendek, they, they ran him out, even though he was going to tournament every year. It wasn't good enough. They, people wanted, they, and they were tired of him winning, getting the tournament. Yeah. Like, Would you please stop getting the tournament so we can fire you? <laughs> you know, that's kind of where it was with Tom Crean. It was at, at, towards the end. They were kind of happy he wasn't getting in the field because he'd be fired. And that's where it is. I guess with some people with Archie. All I know about Archie, like I don't pretend to speak for the fan base. I have no idea what you know. I know what people tell me on Twitter, and it goes both ways. But a guy that gets booed by the crowd as much as he gets booed at Assembly Hall in the pregame introductions, and it's not deafening. It's not. I'm not trying to say that. But when it's very clearly competing with cheers for the even noise, that's a problem, and that's what's happening. And, and it's getting worse by the game. It's gotten worse. Like because I, I, you know, I'm always listening for it. I, Cream too. By the game, it's gotten worse. And this last game is Wisconsin. Before the game, it was it was fifty fifty probably. Yeah, and I think he's fine. Like I don't think he's going to get fired after this year. Do you? No, 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 no. Yeah. So I think he's got at least next year. But it would be nice to see some progress. I think making the NCAA tournament would finally be some progress, even if Indiana's not as far along as you would have liked three years into the Archie Miller tenure. At least that would signify that would be something concrete that you could point to and say, see the the program is actually moving in the right direction and in a way it'd be fairly impressive uh, granted we've seen the season we've seen but on paper the, yeah they added trace jackson davis um, but they lost romeo an nba lottery pick mm-hmm. say what you want about us i mean he's an nba lottery pick and they lost their leading scorer rebounder best player juan morgan and so to lose those two guys and you bring in a, a big man mcdonald's all american it's kind of hard to get those guys on track unless they're kevin durant you know one and done types and trace is not that you know, a freshman big man is no guarantee to be really good as a freshman in, in this day and age. But anyway, they've done fairly well. But the problem is the, we've seen so many games unfold the way they've unfolded. and That's the problem, yeah, because yeah. it all comes out in the wash. I mean, Indiana was picked to finish ninth, and they finished 11th in the Big Ten. Indiana's been right around where I thought they'd be. I thought they'd be right on kind of the cut line for the field, and that's where they are. But to be teased into, you know, blowing the big lead at home against Arkansas, blowing the lead in the final minute against Maryland, collapsing against Wisconsin – You know, those three games, and yes, Indiana's had other 50-50 games that they easily could have lost, but those three games in particular stand out to me. You win all three of those games, and we're having a very different conversation. Indiana, first off, is safely in the field, and they're probably something like a seven seed instead of, you know, trying to fight their way into perhaps the first four or being, you know, on the wrong side of the 7-10 game. And they're capable of beating Florida State. Granted, it was Assembly Hall. I get it, but FSU has acquitted itself quite well in the ACC. Home and road. And road. And they come in here and – are you ran them out. I mean, that's pretty damn good. Uh, Purdue dead now at this point with that home loss to Rutgers. I mean, gotta be. Yeah, they. But before that loss to Rutgers, I wasn't on board with. They've got to win the tournament. I thought if they get to the final, that means they've won three or four games. And they've probably beaten two really good teams to get to the final. Mm-hmm. They're in if they if they do that. Um, but having lost to Rutgers, now I'm 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 thinking they got to win the whole thing. I'm thinking. I guess it depends on who's waiting for them. I, to even have a conversation about Purdue getting in, they've got to get to Sunday. Oh, yeah, to even have a conversation, they've got to get to Sunday. Yeah, because they just don't have enough wins. You, you, can't, you can't lose 15, 16 times and make the NCAA Truth tournament. is, they have enough wins. They've got too many losses. And I, I mean, that, that's what I mean. I, I don't yeah. mean to sound stupid, but yeah. right. But they, they've, their wins look really good. The problem is you just can't have 16 losses. Um, it's almost if, if they had not scheduled um, – no, that, that doesn't work that way. Never mind. They, they have – They've been benefiting from Virginia turning it around, and getting great again, and from Iowa being pretty good. And I mean, they, they've beaten the hell out of some teams. So, and they've won won at Iowa. They, they they've got a resume that says they can win enough games to get in this field. 
But they've got a resume that says they've lost too many to put them in unless they win the tournament, probably. Yeah, I just think you, you have to have some breathing room between you and the 500 mark. And if you're one game over 500, you're just you're just not going to get a bid. It doesn't matter who you beat. Yeah, the thing is this year is, you know, every year is different and unique. And this year the Big Ten is considered so good that if there was every – like most years, 19, 16, 17, whatever the record is, we wouldn't – we'd be giggling about the idea that they're in the field, just giggling that they might even make it someday, somehow – but this is not most years. This is a year where the Big Ten has had teams. I mean, good Lord. I mean, IU is probably getting in the field, and they're 11th. You know, that's a pretty damn deep league right now. No, you're you're not, not lying about that. I mean, we're having a conversation about the 11th team in the Big Ten getting into the tournament. Yeah. Um, I think this was always going to be a transition year for Purdue, but it, it is disappointing to see them – you know, not even make the NCAA. And really what's been disappointing is exactly what you outlined earlier, Greg, and, you know, no real progression from no gel Eastern. Aaron Wheeler, who I think they were expecting a lot out of, was – and I hate saying this. I mean, he's a Fairfield County, Connecticut kid like me, but, you know, Aaron Wheeler was a train wreck this year. I mean, it, that was an awful season for him. Something I noticed um, the last Purdue game I was at, and I want, before I go there I want to say this, nobody uh, nobody does pregame and even in game and halftime – Nobody does the the pregame songs and you know get you fired up and the band playing this and here's the music we're gonna listen to as we wait for the jump ball to tip off. Nobody does like Purdue. I just want to say that there's nobody better. I don't know. I don't know who does that. That's that's not a Matt Painter thing, right? That's a marketing it's, thing, yeah, in house, whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking about from the silly little videos they show of No Jell Eastern, you know, teaching us the way he speaks to. Uh, you know, he's got different words. No Jell always does. But, <laughs> I mean, all the stuff they do is just unbelievable. But one thing I noticed by watching, and I, and I always come out there, they are the one school that when I'm covering a game, I'm at my seat early because I want to hear, because I get fired up. There's a song they play when the Purdue team is waiting to come out the uh, tunnel. And there's no words to it, and it's kind of the same eight or nine, ten notes just over and over and over and over. And I, I, I don't even know what that's called, but I, if I get that on my iPod, I'd work out to it. It's unbelievable. Um, anyway, that pregame montage they show is heavy on Aaron Wheeler. And he, you can just watch it and tell the 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 person of honor in the pre in the preseason when they did this, they were building that thing around Aaron Wheeler. So yeah. I don't know if that was just the Purdue people kind of assuming like we all did he's going to take a big step up, or they went to Matt Painter and said who do we who do we highlight? And he told them we I don't know. All I know is Wheeler was they built that thing around him. I mean he wasn't supposed to average four points a game no <laughs> this year and shoot thirty percent and a nice young shooting. man. I, I oh feel, a great kid. Right, yeah, I, I don't like like if they're pros. I mean, I guess there's a pace that's really nice, and we're crapping on him. I'd say that, I suppose, but I really want to say it about Aaron because a nice young man. You, yeah. you you hope he figures it out because he's. I mean, it sounds ridiculous to say this, but the Aaron Wheeler I saw last year was two years away from being a pro, and the Aaron Wheeler I see this year is obviously two years away from you know giving me fries with that. I mean, he's just playing himself right out of a future. It's the damnedest thing, but I hope he figures it out. Which could be a positive for Purdue if maybe you know it, it's a late bloomer. Maybe he stays all four years. Oh, right, it'd be all five, five years because right. he'd be had been redshirted. Right. Um, Butler closes with three straight wins. A season that looked like he was hitting the skids in Kamar Baldwin's heroics, thirty six points, which was amazing. And then the game winner at Xavier. Um, how do you feel about them as they head into the Big East tournament in New York? They're, ugh, that that, that I mean that conference is brutal. I, I, people don't want to th- say it is. I don't know, but Creighton, Villanova, um, leaving Seton Hall. I mean that's three great teams, and Butler's pretty good. Um, and I, Providence has kicked them around oh, since they've gotten is, into the Big East. Providence is nothing but men. I mean, they're mm-hmm. just they recruit men, they coach men, they're just big guys. So yeah, that's a tough one, real tough. One. And Marcus Howard, by the way, if he goes off, you're not beating Marquette if he scores 50 on you, which he can do. So I don't like their chances there, and I don't like their chances to win the NCAA tournament either. I mean, clearly I don't. But they are a team that if, if they're in the NCAA field, you don't want to see them. You just don't want to see them. Now Big East is different. They 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 know Laval. They know the personnel. They you know they it's. You don't want to have two days to prepare for Butler mm-hmm. in, Mar- in, in, in in like if they beat the first if they win the first round game you don't want to be wait you know even if they're a twelve you don't want to be against them if you're the three or four on Saturday because that's tough they're they're tough they're scary yeah I mean I, I think they're going to be you know Butler's probably looking at something like a six seed around there I mean their body of work is strong it's just that they had a really the, the season right. hit a lull right. where I think they lost eight of twelve. Um, but two things really jump out to me about Butler. I'm with you. Like, my expectations aren't super high for them. If they could make the Sweet 16, that'd be amazing to me. But yeah. even if they could just win one game, I'd call this season a success. Oh, yeah. But two things that jump out to me. A, they can defend, and B, they've got a guy. And usually in a single elimination tournament, those are two things that really can help you. Um, you know, you think about 
Syracuse with Jerry McNamara, Carson Edwards last year with Purdue, you know, teams that have been able to kind of put together pretty decent runs because they've had one guy kind of become Superman, and, and Baldwin can do that. He he absolutely can do that. He's uh, he's on track to uh, be like third or fourth overall in, in Butler in, in points, assists, and steals. I mean, that's – you know, we've seen some players there at Butler, so I, he, I don't think he's a top three all-time player at Butler, and yet the numbers say he is. But, yeah, that Xavier game, he's had a great career. He's won a lot of games. That was far and away the best game of his career – Career high points, won the game at the buzzer, carried him. You look at the box score in that game, Aaron Thompson had a decent game, and no one else did anything. I mean, mm-hmm. nothing. Jordan Tucker was like one for six. Golden didn't do anything. Enzi didn't do I mean, nobody did anything. And despite the fact that Xavier, surely in the second half, was all over, Kamar Baldwin, he just went nuts anyway because he's he can do that. And, you know, Kamar to me is kind of like Butler is, where you watch him on paper. I'm sorry, you watch him in real life, and you think, why? I don't know why Butler's winning. I, you know, they do. Their coach is obviously good. But I really can't tell you like why they're winning. They just do. I'm telling you, I look at Kamar the same way. I mean, he's he's kind of an under the rim for the most part, six one non point guard. Even though he's going to have a lot of assists, he's not a point guard. Um, he's six one. He's a decent shooter, not a great shooter. I don't know. I don't know how he's as good as he is. He, I mean, I just don't get it. And yet, <laughs> the body record, the body works as he is. He's yeah. done the big. He is. I'm just telling you that I, if I was an NBA scout, I don't even know what I'm looking at. His ability to create his own shot is pretty, yeah, incredible. Um, yeah. so, I mean, that's the one team that we know for sure is going to be in the field here in the state of Indiana. Um, Pacers have won six of seven since I said I was punting on their season two episodes ago. You fired them up. Obviously, someone's listened to the podcast. A 4-1 and one road trip as well. They head home tonight. I'm assuming you're going to that game against Boston. You assume wrong. Oh, really? I, I would be going, and I, I told the Pacers, as I emailed, not that I need to, but I emailed Dave Benner and all those folks and said, I'm not going to be at your game tomorrow night. This is yesterday. Please don't look at that as a sign of disrespect. Um, I, I didn't get into it. It's too long. I got a family thing. I told him, but my, my younger son is a college senior at Bowling Green State up in Ohio, three and a half hours away. He's going on spring break on a, a scuba diving trip to the Bahamas, I think. Um, he's got a cat, and he's got no one to take care of it, and i got to go get the cat. And today's and the, the day. cat's going to stay with you in Indy? Stay, right. And, cool. And Jackson's leaving Thursday, my son. Tomorrow's the Big Ten tournament, and uh, I, got, I got tonight. So it That's sucks. a good dad. Oh, it's a good Driving dad. Driving three and a half hours, but se- seven hours round trip yeah, for a but, cat? Yeah. But I'm missing out on you know the Pacers and never mind they're playing Brad Stevens, Carson Edwards, Romeo. Never mind all that. They're just they deserve to have whoever's got my job at the Star ought to be there for this game. And I feel bad that that guy me won't be there. You're at everything. Not anymore. I'm <laughs> picking up my damn cat. See, you know, and and I, you know, a lot of your idiosyncrasies and all of that. It's it's actually kind of charming, I think. But please don't beat yourself up about missing a regular season Tuesday night Pacers game. One of Four that they've played this year against Boston. Do you understand that if if we were, if if there was something in college, if there was something in life that like you went to life for college or vice versa, my major is beating myself up. That's my major. Yeah. That's that is what I major in. It's also my minor, and I'm taking a few <laughs> like uh, summer trips to go beat myself up somewhere else. Yeah. That's what I do. My major was piercings. Oh God, beer pong. <laughs> Could you be a bigger douchebag? <laughs> Can bad. I say those words? Uh, yeah, I think we can. It's a podcast. I mean, we could drop F-bombs if we really want to, but I don't want to do that. All right, I'll let you hit the road for Bowling Green. Uh, we'll come back next week and have plenty to talk about. The NCAA tournament will be here. We'll see if Indiana gets in the field. We'll see where Butler is. We'll see if maybe Purdue has a miracle run in Indianapolis. Uh, all of that and more on the next episode of Doyle and Derek. But hang on, I apologize. I'm beating myself up and willing this whole drive for saying G-O-D. I don't like saying that out loud because it offends some people. I don't want to do it. And I feel bad for calling you that name. So, Paul, I, I forgive me, please. Oh, it was one hundred percent deserved. If you knew me when I was, <laughs> if you knew me when I was twenty, you'd say the same thing. Ah, smooch for the you. Same thing. We'll talk to you next week, man. All right.